Multiculti Tutti Fruity older son has an assignment from his English teacher, the same English teacher who recently downgraded him for using pronouns too much not that I noticed, no unclear antecedents, she just apparently wants the character name in every sentence. Because that is professional writing. She did, after all, once sell a poem to a Paysin Copies magazine. And no, this is not intended as disparagement of people with only one or no publication credits. It is intended, however, as a shove back at someone who invokes that one credit as her authority for writing well. So, yesterday he came into my room bitching, belly aching, and moaning over the speech he has to make. I stopped pounding keyboard long enough to glare at him. Since when is speaking for 20 minutes a problem? You normally don't stop speaking. Oh, yeah. But, I'm supposed to make a speech about my culture. This, of course, brought my writing to a complete stop as I tried to understand what this might mean. Because surely she can't mean that Robert has a culture. Unless, of course, she means that Robert's culture is the thing that happens to his socks when he forgets to put them in the hamper and lets them marinate under his bed for weeks. Somehow, I don't think that's it. So, right now I'm sitting on my hands to avoid sending his English teacher a sharp note that starts with that word doesn't mean what you think it means. Oh, I'm not stupid. I know what she thinks she means. Why do I know it? Because time and again idiots have told me I should teach Portuguese to the boys because it's part of their culture. Which, it patently isn't. It's arguably part of their heritage in the sense many of their ancestors spoke Portuguese. It's part of my cultural background to the extent I grew up and lived there till young adulthood, speaking of which, I will one of these days answer the post of the gentleman who asked me why I don't write about Portugal. Yes, there are reasons. Several. Some of them rational and having nothing to do with the fact that I was a stranger in a strange land ought. Or at least it's part of what makes me me. And I can see the advantages of teaching the boys another language, of course, except that neither of them is really much good at languages, and both of them refuse to learn languages from me among others, the ability to speak to my parents and family. But objectively how can Portuguese have anything to do with their culture? They have been born and raised in the States mostly in Colorado in a fairly middle-class family with parents in intellectual professions. If they're part of any culture it's the middle-class geek culture. But oh, we've gone so far from sanity. In schools these days, culture is now equated with genetic background. Which is why you can criticize any culture without being told you're being racist. I find this a bizarrely narrow view of the human condition, particularly considering most of the people proposing it are far from being conservative, one that precipices we are the result of our genes only. In this view, I'm interchangeable with any other female born in the north of Portugal. Or if you want to be really narrow, I'm the same as any other female born in Agua Santas, Maya, at around the time I was born. Which is patently absurd. Not only am I not the same, the 12 girls in my class in the village when I graduated 4th grade, those who are still alive are nothing like me. The one I possibly have the most in common with is my erstwhile bestest friend from 1st grade. No, we haven't ever got mad at each other. We just have a notion between us who married a Frenchman and lives in Croissy sur Andel in France. What I have in common with her is that we both had to adapt to a different culture and language, both of us are married to the man we married 20 very odd years ago, and both of us have two children roughly the same ages. If you think that's too little, you should see what I have in common with the other people. And yes, I am ranting and possibly foaming at the mouth. This idea that culture is genetic denies everything I've done with my life, everything that I've tried to make of myself. It also denies the reason I fell madly in love with the United States when I was an exchange student here at 17. Yes, it was love at first sight. Why? Because coming from a culture where at least back then conformity was strictly enforced by everything from the old ladies in the village to the fashion police, I found here I was free to be whatever I wanted and to reinvent myself in any way I wanted to. At the other end of the tunnel that this vision of culture creates lies a stratified regimented society more rigid than the former castes of India. The type of society where you grow up to be a clerk class B because that's what your ancestors were. The type of society none of us wants to live in. So why would people push it while telling children their future is limitless and that they should be able to express themselves in any way they want to? I don't know. My only guess is that they don't examine the assumptions and the things they say. Perhaps it's knock-off part of their culture. Dear Ms. Once Published Poet, regarding your attempt to have my son, Robert, discourse on the subject of his personal culture, we find ourselves somewhat perplexed, not to say dumbfounded on how he is to comply with this. Looking culture up on dictionary. Com, I found the following definitions of the word, Robert really has never concerned himself with arts, letters or scholarly pursuits he sold his soul to rock and roll and his heart to science fiction, and if you think he has manners. 
it must be because you haven't seen him demolish the greater part of the turkey on Thanksgiving. Therefore, I should warn you that this boy ain't got no culture. Again, as reference to his particular culture, please see above above. We are doing the best we can to civilize both boys, but let's face it, as teenage males, they're just past caveman stage and that they have learned to walk upright and have mastered fire, though I still wouldn't trust them with this too far, because of what happened to the hamburger patty and the toaster oven. Details too gruesome to share. We hope eventually they will be excellent in arts and manners, but we aren't waiting with sandwiches by the phone. Despite the vast quantities of food consumed by our sons, and Robert's tendency to refer to his brother as Fidel Comics, dictator of Arikpa, mostly because no comics are allowed to escape Eric's room. Not even in inner tubes Robert is not, to the best of our understanding, an independent nation. In fact, he hasn't even attempted pseudo-independence declarations along the lines of you're not the boss of me. Mostly because he's very afraid the retort would be well, then. I'm not the laundress of you, either. While this would be an admirable topic for a 20-minute speech, Robert is absolutely convinced this is not what you mean. Please advise. He will be happy to discourse for 20 minutes or indeed hours about the how to write books he's devoured and the SF he's read. Again, despite the fact that Robert is a larval writer, equipped with several characters in head, he doesn't appear to be a group of any kind. Of course, if he keeps hitting the hamburgers, this might change. Or at least he might acquire his own zip code. Would that make him a culture? The culture he's been brought up in is U.S., Western, 21st century, perhaps fitting best within the geek group. It is not uniquely his. If this is what you meant, why didn't you ask for a discussion of local culture, school culture, middle class, U.S. culture or whatever? There isn't a Robert culture. Though it makes a neat name for a rock band. Here you might possibly have something. At least if you assume Robert is a typical teen which he isn't. Yeah, there was the incident of the socks, once, but by and large his room is clean. He even makes his bed with hospital corners every morning before going to school. So, if you want this type of culture, I recommend Eric, who is forever bringing plastic cups full of milk to his room, and then forgetting them. Just give us some time to get the microscope out yeah, like you don't have a microscope at home, too, and let Robert talk about Eric's culture. That should make for an interesting talk. Verb used with object Robert once grew a mango plant. However, he had to go on vacation and I watered it, resulting in its turning black and mildewy. I do that to other people's culture. While Robert can be considered an interesting living material introduced into a culture medium, we are not sure what approach you wish him to take to speak on this. Would it be speaking of himself as a living organism? Or would you rather he expounds at length on his incursions into the SFF community culture? He is writing a story about a pirate who reproduces by mitosis with the result that he's always stealing his own treasure. Then there's the space opera about the millionaire, his 100 bioengineered trough wives, a bioengineered mentally improved winged cat and an intelligent toaster. The cat and the toaster kidnap one of the millionaire's wives to demand rights for all sentience. But that's just the beginning. Of course you don't mean any of the above. What you do in fact wish is for Robert to speak about his ancestors, and preferably make it as interesting as possible. You are in fact convinced that the ancestry makes the person. Robert knows how to ace this assignment, and so do I. All he has to do is speak for as short a time as possible about his father's Puritan ancestors who settled in New England, and for as long as possible on the people you think are exotic my ancestors. If he can manage to throw in a hint of oppression unlikely as it might be. My branch of Almedas aren't generally scared. We are the people other people are scared of and hard luck, you'll be putty in his hands. Yes, Robert understands this, and so do I. And he'll play the game for points and grades, as I did in my time. But just once I wish we could talk to you really talk and examine those assumptions you are imposing on the children. You are teaching a gifted class. Why would you assume that each person has an individual culture which is genetically determined? And why would you want to indoctrinate the children in this horribly limiting idea? Is your vision of the perfect world the Middle Ages, where the son of a cobbler must grow up to be a cobbler? I'm not innocent or naive. I know that the dead hand of the past weighs upon all of us more than we'd like it. The understanding that we are creatures of our genes and our ancestors age or before adaptations to a long-vanished environment my friend Ave Freer sent me an article the other day about how people see animal shapes clearer than other shapes, for X is with me always, yes. I am also aware that the very language, which informs our thoughts, is the product of generations of accretion and erosion, and carries within it the scars of long-forgotten traumas in the region of Portugal I come from, slang for pig and blonde, is the same word Russo and the Rus tribe of Vikings raided that coast extensively. You figure it. I'm even more aware for various reasons that a trauma can take several generations to work itself through a family. 
My friend Charles thinks this is the origin of the biblical sins of the father and seven generations thing. He says in psychology it's believed a major trauma takes seven generations to resolve itself in a family tree. I don't know. I haven't had time to fact check him. But he's usually right in these factoids. But all this you could say is the result of the human condition and the civilization we are immersed in. It does not result in individual cultures. Nor does it mean that an individual can transcend his place of birth and its culture, change it all together, and stretch wings towards the distant skies, and hopefully the distant stars. When I was a child in Portugal bubblegum came in one flavor. Tutti fruity. It was a vaguely sweet flavor that made a nod to banana and cherry, and who knows what else. A flavor that didn't linger and made no particular impression. Each piece of gum tasted exactly like every other. They came off the machine that way. Children are not bubblegum. And they aren't all tutti fruity. It is pernicious, wrong and possibly immoral to teach them that they're stuck with the language, habits and beliefs of their parents, or even of the wider group they were born into let alone the language, habits and beliefs of their distant ancestors. By all means, have the children talk about themselves, and even about what makes them unique. But don't saddle them with the idea this is a culture and therefore immutable. Please, think about what you are doing, and allow the children to be what they need to be tutti fruity, perhaps, some of them, but also mint and green apple, and the occasional wild bit of cinnamon. If you like this content and want to support this channel, the blog, and Sarah's continued writing, please like and subscribe. If you really enjoy the content, please come and join the fun at accordingtohit.com.